let's show that uh, the nth derivative um, with respect to x of a product f of x times g of x is equal to the following. So this is going to be equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k. And then the kth derivative of f and then the n minus kth derivative of g. Okay, so cool, right? Look at that. We're like melding calculus together with uh, induction proofs. Who would have known? So this is really like the general product rule. It's like a generalized product rule. So, um, so let's see how this might go. So we're going to do it by induction, which means we need a, a base case. Now, I'd like to point out that the zeroth derivative could be the base case here. It's not like super interesting, so we'll do a bigger base case. By the zeroth derivative, I just mean doing nothing, right? Just the identity operator. That could be a base case. But like I said, it's a boring ba base case, so let's take the case when n is equal to 1, so the first derivative. So that means we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x. But I mean, we all know what that is from calculus, right? So that's going to be uh, f of x times g prime of x plus f prime of x times g of x, right? But uh, check it out. This is uh, k equals 0, and then n uh, minus k equals 1. In other words, n is equal to 1, right? And then this looks like k is equal to 1, n minus k is equal to 0. Remember, both of them are with uh, n is equal to 1, I guess, right? So like, I guess I could just put here instead of n minus k, it's like 1 minus k, right? 1 minus k is equal to 0 because that's what it's going to look like up there. But now we can rewrite this as, let's see, this is going to be 1 choose 0, the 0th derivative of x, and then the first derivative of g. Just writing it in weird notation, right? And then this is 1 choose 1, the first derivative of f, and then the zeroth derivative of g. Where I'm just, notice that there, there's 1 right here, right? Yeah. Well, 1 choose 0 is 1. So we might as well take that 1 and write it as 1 choose 0. Then there's a 1 right here too, right? We might as well take that 1 and write it as 1 choose 1. But now check it out. This is exactly equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to 1 of uh, 1 choose k, and then uh, the kth derivative of f, and then the n minus kth derivative of g. Right? Now, if we wanted to, like, I don't know, put like a little more structure in here, I don't know that this is strictly necessary, but we could write this as 1 minus 0, and this is 1 minus 1, so it looks exactly like that up there. But anyway, the base case is proven, right? Does that seem OK? Um, OK, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's uh, suppose for some, now notice that k is my like iterator on the sum, right? So we need to use some other number, right? So maybe m, that seems fine. So for some m bigger than or equal to 1, we have the following. So the nth derivative with respect to x of the product f of x times g of x is equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to m. m, sorry, no that's right, m choose k, the kth derivative, and then the m minus kth derivative. So that's the that's the, k, the nth case, right? So or set up, it's the induction hypothesis, right? So now, uh, let's 
consider the next case, right? So that would be the m plus first derivative. So let's just write it out as the m plus first derivative first. And then let's recall that the m plus first derivative is the first derivative of the nth derivative, right? So this is the derivative of, like I said, the nth derivative. <clears throat> but now we can apply the induction hypothesis to the nth derivative, right? And that's going to leave us with the derivative of the sum as k goes from 0 to m of m choose k, kth derivative of f, m minus kth derivative of g, right? But now the derivative is a the derivative is a linear transformation. So that means we can take I'm working, I'm working on it. That means we can take the derivative inside of the sum, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And then then the derivative will act on these, right? <clears throat> then we can use the product rule when the derivative acts on these, right? That's going to split it into two pieces. So that's going to give us the sum as k goes from 0 to m of m choose k. And then we've got a bunch of stuff here, right? So let's take, I don't know, maybe take the derivative of f first. I don't know that it really matters, but let's see. We'll have the k plus first derivative of f times the m minus kth derivative of g plus the kth derivative of f times the m minus k plus first derivative of g. Now, I don't know, that looks kind of intimidating, right? But that's just the, that's just the derivative on this function, right? So notice it increases the, the derivative index, if you will, of each function one at a time, right? So it pushes the f to the k to a f k plus 1, k derivative to k plus first derivative. And then over here, it, uh, pushes the g derivative up one. All right, now let's split that into two sums. <clears throat> this uh, kind of technique that we're seeing here is, I think, really important and something that like um, is often, I don't know, people seem to kind of just be nervous about it, but never work through the like nerves to build the skill. But I think like this kind of thing with just not being afraid of writing sums like this is uh, pretty important. OK, so anyway, we just took that sum and split it into two pieces, right? Uh, no, not not at, like a, um, just working with arbitrary sums. Well, that stuff that feels really hard, really ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. But I mean, what did we do right there? We used the uh, the associative rule of addition. Yeah. Right, that's all it is. It right, it's the associative rule of addition. Here we're grouping like this, right? And over there we're grouping slightly differently. Yeah, it's just we're doing it generally. OK, so now I'd like to look at this and note that the smallest f derivative here is the first derivative, right? The smallest f derivative here is the zeroth derivative. The largest f derivative here is the m plus first derivative. And the largest f derivative here is the nth derivative. So these, these two kind of line up everywhere other than that, right? So what we want to do is pull the largest derivative out of this term and the smallest derivative out of this term. And I just realized I maybe should have written it in the other order, but it kind of doesn't matter in the end. So let's see. Let's pull the largest derivative of f out of this. So that will be the k equals m part. So notice that the k equals m part will give us a m plus first derivative of uh, f and a zeroth derivative of g. And notice that it's attached to a coefficient 1, right? Because it's attached to 
m choose m, which is 1. Because it's how many m element subsets of an m element set. OK. And then we're going to have the sum as k goes from 0 to m minus 1, m choose k, uh, k plus 1, uh, m minus k. OK, good. So I just changed my ending point, right? So I took this sum and I took the top off and I just wrote the rest of it. Now I'm going to essentially do the, the same thing here, maybe the dual thing. So let's take the bottom term off here. So that's going to be the, deri the no derivative of f and then what derivative of g is it if k is equal to 0? It's the, k, it's the m plus first derivative of g, right? So the m plus first derivative of g. And then after that, we're going to have the sum as k goes from 1 up to m of m choose k. Well, it's the same thing again, right? And our, our coefficient is still 1. Exactly. Good. So we've got something like that. And this is the um, expansion of that. And now we're going to re-index these two sums. Okay. So, well, actually, probably just one of them. So now, what I want to do is change these so the derivatives look the same, right? So I can add them together. And notice that I can do that by taking every k here and replacing every k here with k minus 1. So I'm taking every k and I'm replacing it with k minus 1. OK, so let's see what that does for us. Let's bring down this thing first. So the m plus first derivative and then no derivative plus the sum. Now, notice that if I replace every k with k minus 1, that means my starting point here is not 0 anymore. It's, it's when k minus 1 is equal to 0. So it's 1. So when is k minus 1 equal to 0? It's when k is equal to 1. So this goes k equals 1 up to m. Because when k minus 1 is equal to m minus 1, k is equal to m. Right? Now I'm going to have m choose k minus 1, right? And then I have the kth derivative of f. And then what's the derivative of g? Yeah, m minus k. I'm actually going to write that as m plus 1 minus k. OK. Oh, but check it out. Now that looks exactly like this thing right here, right? Except for k minus 1 binomial coefficient. Uh, right. So let's maybe add that in. So we've got m choose k and then uh, the k derivative and then the m plus first minus kth derivative. Good. And then we'll just bring this one down. The OK, so something like that, right? Now let's uh, maybe put. That last term is outside the sum. Yeah, let's put safety parentheses around this so we know that all of that's within the sum. OK. Now note that this is the same thing attached to just different binomial coefficients, right? Now, let's look at those binomial coefficients that it's attached to. We have m choose k minus 1 plus m choose k. Is there, a, is there an identity that tells us what that is? What do we want it to be? What would be the best case scenario? Just Keep in mind, like, the formula we're going for. It was m plus 1 choose k. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. So m plus 1 choose k. Good. So now let's check out what we have. We have the m plus first derivative. Uh, and I, now I'm going to take these and write them in a different order. I'm going to take that one over there and move it. So I'm going to have just f and then the, k, the m plus first derivative of g and then plus the sum as k goes from 1 to m, m plus 1 choose k, k 
kth derivative, uh, m plus first minus kth derivative, and then outside of the sum we have the m plus first derivative of f, the zeroth derivative of g, right? But now what I want to do is notice that there's a 1 right here, but that 1 is the same thing as m plus 1 choose 0, right? And then there's also a 1 right here, but that 1 is what? Yeah, m plus 1 choose m plus 1. Exactly. So now this, this will push into the sum as the k equals 0 term. Yeah, because look, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this pushes into the sum as the k equals m plus 1 term. And that leaves us in the end with the sum as k goes from 0 up to m plus 1 of m plus 1 choose k. Well, I mean, what we want, right? m plus 1 minus k. Yeah. But now, look, going from here to here is what finishes this proof by induction, right? We assumed the, case, the mth case, and we proved the m plus first case. Yeah.